uh, waiting for you, Ronit. Uh, always look forward to Hi, seeing you. How are you, buddy? Good, great. How are you? Oh, good. So uh, uh, always interested in your esoteric work. And, uh, uh, you know, you do a lot of, uh, like, what do you call it, correlation work, uh, where you're always, you know, you rarely just do a pure chart. You're always comparing something to something. And I'm wondering why, why um, <laughs> you're always doing that. It's, it's because of curiosity. So you're okay. curious and you actually come up with some kind of like, which actually is not uh, the usual. So what is technical analysis? People actually say 50 uh, moving average or 200 day moving average. I always ask why, why would you use that? Or why would you use a trend line? Is it because it's something like a slope or uh, uh, why is it related to, uh, you know, uh, yeah. time or price? It's just curiosity. And uh, and you can call it like fluke uh, that uh, maybe I'm able to see uh, correlated and it's not seen uh, you know, holistically. So, uh, okay. and it gets interesting. Until okay. actually unravel. It's something like, even I was a non-believer. So that's why for the first time when I was doing something 10 years back, I actually um, uh, wrote something to Larry Parsonto. I, he was a harmonic trader, right? right? So he wrote to me, I've never seen anything like this in my 45-year Wall Street career. I would request you do not share this with anyone. That's where I got it. Maybe I'm onto something. So till then, even I didn't know what, what's going on. So okay. I still have that mail. But well, thank you, for, thank you for not listening to Larry. Oh, oh yes and but and I, sharing your work so you know uh yes. now we know how larry thinks so uh, okay so you want to talk about the moon cycle or the royal cubit uh, but you you had like a 200 dollar uh oil headline up there uh, is oil. that later in the presentation yeah that's later in the presentation we'll actually go through the sequence of things okay Please well go uh, ahead i'm gonna i'm just gonna let you take it away okay so let's start with something interesting. Uh, this is the ancient royal cubit. So why we actually find- Can you give us uh, a little more volume, Ronit? Just a little more volume. Uh, let me, please. Can you hear? Better. Okay. So this is the cubit where the Egyptians actually found a way to measure things. So uh, it's kind of related to the moon cycles also. So let me draw it. So there are 20 uh, years for one meter. It's actually related to pi two. So it's something like pi uh, plus 0.523. So six units of uh, six cubits, royal cubits, is equal to uh, one meter, or uh, you can say 3.14 or something like that. So we'll come on to that. So there are 28 units for each cubit, which is. Uh, um, which is kind of a measurement which the ancients actually used it. So uh, uh, the similarities are even the lunar cycles have 28 units. That is 28 days it takes to go through one cycle. That's why we ha actually follow the full moon and the new moon. Right. Where there is a change in trend. So it's nothing new. So a lot of people actually uh, did try about the lunar cycles and they said that if 28 into 13 months are there, there are 366 days, which is a 13 month cycle. But, uh, but then there were people who were actually talking about sun cycle. Sun cycle was like 30 into seven plus 31 into five. That's like 365, 12 month cycle. So uh, some people followed the sun, uh, different religions or uh, uh, Asia, they followed the sun as a cycle, but the Arabs and uh, other nations followed the moon. Uh, yeah, Hebrews, uh, the Jewish people. Uh, exactly. Is that cubit um, similar to the Hebrew inch, which I think was different than, um, you know, what we look at as an inch, and that was a the measurement they used uh, as slaves for building uh, the pyramids, the Hebrew uh, basically inch? Basically, 12 inches is one meter. I think one cubit is close to uh, 12 inches. Maybe that's true. But You're breaking up a little bit. Back. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There is an interesting fact. So uh, just uh, lift your hands and how many phalanges are there in your hand? So this five. is a 13 month cycle. Ah, uh, no. You just have five? 
Yeah. Are you sure? So a phalange in each finger, you will have something like phalange. One. Okay. So there are seven colors. So this is like a phalange. Each hand, you can count three. And there are only phalanges in your thumb. So oh. 14 phalanges and four phalanges on the right and side. there's 28 again. Exactly. So 28, okay. again, you can have four points to it. So that it's Sunday, seven days, Sunday, seven. So uh, maybe uh, that was a way to calculate cyclicality. Now, interesting thing, have you played piano before? So how many keys are there? 88 keys. How many what? So uh, p a piano, the musical oh, instrument. Oh, piano keys. Play, piano? I, I'm not sure. Uh, it's, uh, maybe I think 88 or something. So when you actually divide 88 by 28, what do you Okay, you're breaking up a little bit. Okay, 88. 88 All right. Uh, divided by 28, you get 3.14. Maybe okay. that's why it's pi okay. anno. Okay. Pi anno. So something oh, interesting. Pi anno. So maybe in a new order. So you yeah. actually create with 28. Uh, uh, phalanges, you, you, you press those keys with different uh, pressure points, if I'm not right. wrong. Right. So somebody can actually check it, but this is not uh, no coincidence for some reason. It's amazing. So actually, I, I, learned, I learned something that from, you know, to me and most people, pi plus anno uh, would, would have been invisible to me until today. So, so you, uh, you can try it. Uh, uh, one qubit is like 0.523 into six parts. That's close to 3.14. Yeah. So pi by six is like the measured time in some way, measured time, price, and energy. So it, 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 it was not just a flash in the pan kind of logic. So, okay. so let's get on to topic. Okay. Uh, indices. So... Uh, as we discussed last time, what what actually breaks this model? So, Dow chart. Um, can you? Yeah, we got it. Can you scroll it up a little bit? Uh, the, uh, uh, now down a little bit. So it's in, we're missing the top of it now. So just a little, give it a little uh, touch. Very oh, okay, that's My pretty good. That that you had it pretty good before. Okay, can you see it now? See nothing now. There. Stop. Okay. Okay. So uh, this is the 100-year cycle, I mean, 100-year trajectory of uh, what was happening in the Dow. Now, observe that the last wave was equal to the fifth wave, the 100% move. Uh, I think 18,000. We are expecting somewhere around 37,000 last time we actually we discussed. This could be it. Uh, we have another 7, 8%. But it actually matches with 29 cycle. And uh, 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 we had a free timeline on, so I will actually move my uh, Ronan, uh, I, I remember, like, you know, you send me a lot of charts uh, during the week and stuff, and you had a lot of things concluding around the solstice, June 21st. Several months ago, <laughs> you had things that, that pointed, cycles that pointed towards that date. Am I correct? Was I interpreting? Yes, yes. yes. Okay. Yes, okay. but what what would be the trigger? Uh, we'll come on to that. So okay. this is a Fibonacci timeline where I've used 1974 as a starting point and then projected to 1987. Can you see all the pinpoints, even uh, October 02 level, bottom, and then there is a crisis at 161.8. And then yeah. we had a last year, 2020, a crisis, which basically managed till it worked out. So this is a Fibonacci point where there's a lot of negative energy. So it's a party. it did come back as a feedback, but uh, we'll be looking at June, but the price has to match, whether it's June or July end, because it's a monthly cycle, right? Okay, right. So let's move on to the next one. Uh, this is again, um, if there is a calculation, remember that 11,000 is the bottom part which is a very critical point. Why it would reach, I would actually statistically prove it. So 
This is where we are looking at the five waves which were happening from uh, March 2009 lows. So probably that's an extension and this is the end wave. But what, uh, again, we have to see what actually triggers it off, right? So yeah. next yeah. one. So if anybody wants to uh, use this um, Dow pressure points, you can actually use uh, why it would happen. And if you observe 33,600, there was a flash crash where currency started rolling over and that 33,600 was held and everything started reversing. So same thing goes with last time when we had an interview around 30,000, 30, 36,600. There was a and then it relaxed. So next time, actually beats 33,600 to some reason, uh, probably that's it. You will see a rollover in currencies and all. Now, this is very uh, nice where uh, the federal debt by uh, divided by the Dow. So if you look at it from 1967, it is holding a trend. Right? So only two periods were inflation trends where uh, the market started breaking. When was it? 1977, when gold started rallying. And yeah. 2007, when again, there was some problem happening, rollover, uh, and oil started going up. So we are at that crossroad again, but we are not sure that will it uh, stop at 37,500 uh, or even it could go to 42K because the more the debt, the higher the indices go to some reason. Um, um, so let's look at the next chart. This is again S&P 500 equal into so you have a pressure point. Why I think that the S&P 500 might not cross 4373 is because the dollar would roll over. Basically, there's a ratio of Dow to S&P 500. So Dow is like 30 stocks. So right now the ratio is somewhere around 8.2, 8.3. If the dollar breaks nine, that could actually well up be at 87, whereas where the Dow could actually be forming because maybe the foreigners are buying. So we'll look at the ratio again. We'll come back to that. Uh, this is one more where they say that uh, if the Dow goes up to 3,700, uh, someone said that uh, NASDAQ could also go up. But if you see clearly, the underperformance is actually striking now. The Dow actually started making 10% higher, 30 to 33,000. But the NASDAQ didn't move further, uh, more than 14,000 or something like that. So do you, uh, you interpret that as... Uh... Uh, kind of bearish since NASDAQ led it on the way up that it's not participating the last several months. Exactly. And you can see the cycles. So uh, the March 2002 cycle where the Dow started outperforming, NASDAQ underperformed. And right. this has been going on in the 70s. So where the money is moving. So uh, if the ratio, let's say the Dow hits something like um, 37,400 due to oil, maybe. Uh, what should be, if the ratio hits three or something like that, 37,400 divided by three, that comes to around 24. That's the pressure point of NASDAQ, where 12, you can say that there is a crash happening. Yeah, okay. 12,450, 400. That means that everything will start selling off. So there are programs which are actually, they'll be long down, short, short in the, uh, certain stocks. But when everything starts going up and something underperforms, you have that uh, spreads opening. Like in 2007, uh, banking stocks, people had shorted and uh, still gone long and down. They would have made it spread. So you have noticed that spread when the wide gap is opening. So let's move on to the next one. Um, uh, this is the NASDAQ stock. You can see that there is still sell signals over here. So these are pressure points, like uh, Fibonacci pressure points where 13,000 is a very critical mark. Will it go up? We don't know, but there is enough reason that it's highly overbought. And uh, the first uh, flash crash uh, from 13,000, it, it could be as good as something like a Bitcoin, go, go half, something like 5,100 or something like that. But we have to see the trigger. So it's from 1974. So that would help. Then, um, this is a good chart where it, say, it says that this is a huge top where uh, a Dow divided by DXY. So if DXY reaches 100 or say right now it's like 415, right, is the top which I'm projecting. I connected the uh, 2000 highs and 2007 highs, which is around 415. So let's say the top is around 37,400 divided by 405. 
So the dollar could be stagnant, where before ninety, where uh, it starts uh, mattering a lot, and assume that you remember the eleven thousand which I was showing you. So let's assume that DXY uh, breakout is around twenty-two into eighty-seven point two, where I marked the circle. That's around ten thousand six hundred. It matches. So that's where a flash crash. Will suddenly uh, happen because of an event. We don't know yet, but uh, we need to look for uh, um, evidence. So, um, for topping here, does that mean a, a weaker dollar? I initially a weaker dollar, but what would cause that? Uh, what could be the trigger? It could be two hundred dollar oil. That's okay. that's possible. Okay. And if hundred hundred thirty dollars, how much the central banks will be able to tolerate? Uh, will the yields go past two uh, percent and then uh, spike to six percent? Uh, that would catch everybody's attention because we can see in the next chart uh, the Dow Gold ratio. Uh, it has always turned around twenty, nineteen, or twenty mark. So that was the Nixon shock, and then we had August two thousand seven. Always around that twenty mark, there is as a problem, and it reversed around that twenty. So it was around thirty three, thirty four. And gold was seventeen hundred. So even if you multiply seventeen hundred, which was the bottom somewhere, into twenty, the Dow hasn't done much. It has just moved back and forth in a range of three four percent. So that is a significant underperformance. So that's the reason we have to watch gold because that could be tracking uh, what's coming next. So let's look at the next chart. Uh, I think this is again we have seen it the Dow uh, dead divided by Dow. Now this is very interesting. The Dow DXY, if if they actually print money, right? The federal debt, uh, whatever it is, uh, right now the ratio is like three one two six six seven. It uh, goes up by ten percent. The ratio goes by ten percent, which means that either the debt has to go by ten percent and DXY has to remain there, or dollar index has to go down by at least seven to ten percent, and then probably. Uh, September 2011, uh, just about May 2011, September 2011. Always there was. Uh, uh, that's when gold topped out for some reason. Uh, commodities also started going flat to worse, and this line has been held always. The bottom line, and even in 20 crisis, the they expanded the debt so that the dollar could actually uh, be lowered below one or three. To actually stagnate it, but but cycle wise, if you really see 1981 uh, uh, September was the high in uh, yields over there, so there is a significant possibility that yield spike or there is an event which is about to happen in October 2021, which is again 50 years year from 1971. Uh, 1982 was the beginning of the uh, bull market in stocks, August 82, for if I remember. Exactly. Uh, but but the the interest rates uh, spy, uh, you know topped down on September 1981. The fourth. Okay. Right. Okay. So the next year is um, again. Uh, this is debt to gold ratio. So how high uh, can gold go? They don't stop printing or they reverse. So uh, one minute, sorry. So can you see that over there? The marks. If yeah. that thirty five one five is equivalent, what should be the breaking point? So if you calculate, the debt current value is around fourteen eight five eight, right? If it has to break that twenty thirteen five one five, that's equivalent to two zero uh, two zero nine zero gold. That was the best highs. That's simple. But how high can it go? So if it goes there, it has to go to nine seven nine four, which is from there. So gold. Price two zero nine zero to a fifty percent to hit a target of two eight two two. You know, uh, I, I know someone that has that same target for the completion of the bull market in gold. You know, they're not a five thousand, ten thousand, but they're bullish. Um, um, Twenty eight eighty two hmm. was this number based upon, I think, Elliott wave structure. Uh, well, we'll come on to that also. We'll prove it in different well, you ways. Have, you have six minutes, buddy. Okay, okay, I'll try to uh, <laughs> speed it up. All right. All so right. if by chance that 28.822 also breaks, the gold, gold will actually move up by 10x 
from there. That's around 28,231 uh, 28, based on the current date. Wow. So uh, we, can, we could do the same thing with silver. Now you can actually see what's happening with silver, federal debt to silver. Um, yeah. That's approximately, um, if you break it, it has to move, first target is around $70. It has to move up by 2.5 times for the first target to hit. You can see the somewhere around that 37 where I marked it. But if it has to match it up with 1980 highs, it has to move up 57 times from there, which means something like $1,600. And if you actually uh, divide Dow gold ratio, um, you can actually say that the ratio will be somewhere around 15. So what you got to do is just divide um, uh, 2,900 or 28,000, uh, 250 divided by 1,600. That comes to around 17.65. We can actually see that uh, long term uh, very uh, in the next few charts. So this is what the Elliott wave, which they might be projecting, the five-way structure. This is the fifth wave they might be counting. But the problem with the fifth wave is that it can actually go parabolic. It can yeah. have subways and then again expand. So uh, we have to watch that level. So first level is like 2480, 2880. If it starts going above that, then that means there's something seriously wrong with all markets and all currencies. So we'll come on to that. This is where the top is for the gold. If 1901 is crossed, you can be super bullish. Everybody can be super bullish. That like something is uh, structure is changing and will actually handsomely make this year 50%. All you have to do is keep to the plus or five dollar whatever risk. Okay. Okay. So my this is my model which actually it's the same. If 2860 plus the next level is around 4800. Okay. So uh, this is gold. Now if gold has to go up, UAN has to come down. It has to be a risk off. So you can see right. the trajectory from 2015. They have been trying uh, a lot, but it is not moved away from the trend line. So if it breaks 109, probably it could hold around 101 or something like that, that trend line, which is coming down. Then yeah. you get that standard deviation move, which is like a flash crash in 2019. You can see that in 2020, it's a similar move. So it's kind of a inverse correlation, which gives you an argument that gold is super bullish. So uh, yeah. if you divide what if, gold, we divide break, what if we break out above that trend line? Um, which one? Does um, that mean a bear market for gold? It's possible. Uh, it's very much possible. And uh, maybe uh, the, uh, the dollar is actually really in trouble. Uh, we have no idea about it. But uh, okay. the euro doesn't give you the signal that we discussed in euro bonds, which will come on to that where euro bonds uh, might have a very big sell off, uh, something like from 170 to 130. So what happens to the euro? It gets into the euro if euro bond is actually selling off. It's the inverse correlation. So uh, that will actually uh, put a lot of inflationary pressure. And that's the trigger for R2, maybe. So uh, we can see that in this chart that gold divided by USDM, if it spikes above that, it has moved 16 points or 17 points. Probably could die. So if USDN has to uh, be 78 something like that, gold has to be 2900. It's it's like a, it's like a continuous mechanism. So you can see I did a rough calculation on this, and I said that what if a breakout 19 and 110 is there? Okay. Are you still there? I think we lost him. Okay. USDN. Oh. That's when the risk off happens. Or uh, 1995 lows was around 78. So this is a good combination, which I believe that gold could go up and suddenly there is an uh, arrest, a policy change around that 2800, uh, which I've shown you. And uh, USDN could be around 78. This could be a flash crash. This could significantly mean that all the indices all over the world sell off pretty rapidly. So... Uh, we, we just need a trigger and watch the currencies. This is silver. Uh, I believe that you are long in silver. Uh, so if 28.7 is crossed, then I can, I can be sure that this is a triangle. This is a $40 triangle. 28 plus 40 is around $70. So oh, nice. even if you don't know L8 wave, uh, I think 28.7 can be super bullish on anything in silver. Anything that touches it. Uh, this okay. is gold silver ratio. 
you can see that it's holding at 68 even when gold sold off 10% this ratio was didn't gym yeah so it has to go to something like yeah, even if it gold is like breakout is 100 what should divide by 40 around silver should be 40 or right. Four, 40 it, used to be where it uh, traded traditionally for a long time so uh, yes and but uh, we'll see that in the next chart in the ni- in 1967 it actually came down somewhere around 16 so okay. that okay. was like in a 100 year chart you can actually significantly make out that what are the chances so you can see over here uh, the pattern is very nicely set up it's a cup and handle reverse cup and handle and if this is true then it could be heading somewhere around that 15 so 68 is your mark so this could also confirm what you're actually doing how do you position yourself now this is a, a hundred chart chart you can see the gold silver issue you can see in 68 to where the real problem started it was pretty actually in twitter told that uh, 1967 was a period when uh, uh, this palestinian israel problem started and the oil embargo i thought it was 1973 but when you actually check it back the ratio actually bottomed out over there so can it return over there and 40 is the region where it's all straight. All right, uh, Ronan, I, I'm going to have to wrap it here. Now, okay. Uh, okay, hold on. Now, I think a lot of people are going to have a lot of questions for you uh, okay. based upon, you know, what you're talking about. There you go, Forex Gal, 128 crude. And, and anyway, uh, I Pete, will you answer questions for people that uh, contact you on Twitter? Or yeah, do you sure. have an email? Uh, so if you guys um, want to discuss some of the things that, and, and also the internet connection wasn't that good. There was a lot, you'll you'll hear it later. Maybe we could improve on it for next time. Um, but uh, uh, tell people how they could get a hold of you and you'd be willing to discuss uh, any of the markets with them. Yeah, sure. Uh, I can actually uh, shoot a question on Twitter. I don't know any service. So yeah, put it in, uh, type uh, Type it in the chat. Okay, um, you can actually uh, mail me uh, on this email address, or okay. you can actually call, contact me on Twitter, which is, um, uh, you can look at my profile. So, yeah, b- yeah, because, because uh, uh, I mean, a lot of your charts are complex and, uh, uh, might uh, they uh, but very interesting and people might have some questions for you so uh, I want to thank you for your time and you're one of the hardest working technicians I know and uh, I've learned a lot from you over the years and I want to thank you my trading warrior brother for being with us today thanks thank you but I'd like to show you last chart which we actually wrap up okay um, one, like more ch- <laughs> like one more chart okay one so more. this is the combined index this is the combined index of Dow, FTSE, and DAX. So this is a rising wedge, which is yeah. forming. Yeah. It's a combined index. So there is an event which is ready. And, and I did a small study on Fibonacci uh, sequences, where uh, what I did is um, I, ca- I kind of calculated the base year as 2021. So 2021, if you actually ca- count backwards, all the major problems uh, were actually correlated. So 13, 2008, 2001, 21, and then um, uh, 34 was 1987, 1966, even 1788, yeah. which was a French Revolution. So oh, the yeah, I was just a kid then. Years, yeah. Huh? I was Sorry? just a kid. I was just a kid uh, back then. Maybe, you know, maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe you, right. you, you were with Sean Connery. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what is that movie where he, they live for 300 years? Maybe. Uh, yeah. So, so, but uh, I'll tell your listeners, focus on three years, 2022, 2023, 2026. These are really serious things uh, which could happen and uh, which could actually provide a lot of vulnerability. So I would actually pres- uh, give this presentation I would give to you. If somebody wants to read it, they can actually access it. So, okay. Uh, if it helps them. That, that's great. All right, Ronan. Thank you, buddy. Okay, I'm sure. Thanks. I'm sure I'll, I'll be getting some charts from you pretty soon. 
Yeah, pretty sure. All right. <laughs> All, right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that's a wrap. Uh, every, uh, everyone thank uh, Ronit uh, and uh, thank him for being uh, generous to answer any questions you guys still have after uh, this presentation. So remember, don't just count your cycles, count your blessings, and you'll have a great cycle. So uh, you're very welcome. People are thanking you, Ronit. And that's a wrap. You that's a wrap and you could join the team in 11 minutes for morning edge. So take it easy, Ronit. I'll see you. And thank you everyone. See you tomorrow. Adios. Adios.